You know who it is. The whore flick digger did Super 6 Big Mitch. And I'm kicking in those with all three O's. And I'm bringing 28 one-on-ones because we Vegas sons. You are now in the Meadowlands. You in Vegas, man. And you know I'm a 5-3-0, baby. Yeah, the desert made me. Bam! 22-inch Dana of things. Bolo Yang, you can't hang. Nah, I'm playing. Welcome to Vegas Chronicle with the host of the most. The whore flick digger ditch. Super 6, Big Mitch. And today, <clears throat> like any other day, we do what we do. You know, we do what we do. Kick at you with factuals. And today we're going to tell, you know, I, uh, it's been a lot of things going on out here in Vegas, man. And, you know, I just want to take this opportunity to send my deepest condolences, you know, to, um, to Tommy Gunn and Larry Yatt. And 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 T1 and Robin and all them that lost uh, family members. You know what I mean. I mean, uh, may God walk with y'all in y'all healing, and may uh, God keep His hands around y'all, man. Y'all always in my prayers. That's family, man. And it's been real hard out here in Vegas, man. It has, man. It's been heavy, heavy, heavy out here, man. And you know, right now we just need everybody to pray, man, and and and, and pray for Vegas. You need everybody to pray for each other, man, and it's just, it's just, it's just a tough time right now. But moving along, man, I want to tell y'all a story today, man. You know, I, I, I be kind of like reflecting, man, because it's that time. And um, although everything I speak on, you know, um, it's gonna be, you know, some about Vegas and some about other things. But today, I want to tell y'all a story about an individual that was close to me, and. Uh, this individual, man, I, you know me, when I'm close with somebody and somebody cool with me, you know, it's not about what other people say. It's about my relationship with that individual. And if that individual kept it one, 100 with me, we, we, we kept it 100. And today I want to talk about an uh, individual. And um, this is going to throw a lot of people off because they don't expect me to say this guy. But this guy was my ace coon boom ever since I was a little kid. And his name is Easy Money, Emery Gary. Paru. Now, Easy Gary, I mean, Easy, Easy Gary, Easy Money, you know, he uh, he got a brother named Ramon, Ramon Gary. And uh, I first met Easy, you know, I've been knowing him since I was a kid, but to firstly actually meet him, I first met him in, in NYTC back in, uh, I think, 86 or 87. You know, me, uh, uh, him, and, and a guy by the name of Lil Dave from Paru were, were like the three shortest, smallest dudes up there. Of course, they were a couple of years older than me, but, you know, we were the smallest dudes up there. But Easy Money is is known for a few things, you know. I mean, I remember when uh, the Gersons went to uh, Paru Turf to fight the Parus, and I remember they had a nice fight out there, man, and I remember Easy Money was out there fighting, too. You know, he'd he been a, 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 a roof from day one. So they was out there fighting, and uh, I remember um, uh, DMC, uh, Danny McCoy uh, and Easy Money had got into it out there, and uh, they two short little dudes, and, you know, DMC can wrestle, you know, he's been wrestling his whole life, and he kind of picked Easy Money up and threw Easy through a car window, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, he was, it, that was a known situation out there when the Parus and the Gershons was out there fighting, you know, Stanley Mack was out there doing his thing, boy, you know, they, they was getting down out there, that's when it was fisticuffs, you know, and even though they had their fighting, you know, people got through through windows, people got KO'd, all that, man, but everybody went home. That's the thing, that was the beauty of it. Everybody went home. Even though it was a, a nice little walk from what, what Madison Terry's was back to the Gershon, it still, people, everybody made it home. It was just the fisticuffs. See, they kept it at that. That's why I say that error was the realest of all errors. Those was the realest of everybody, the ones that did it this way. You know, they settled their difference with this. When they couldn't talk it out, they did this here. They didn't need to pick up nothing that was unnecessary, man. You know, and that's when, you know, I, I think it was at its best. But moving along, man, I went to Elko, right? And I met Easy Money up there. And Easy, Easy Money was this short dude. He had short hair. You know, he had this, like, he had a soft voice. Like, what's up? He, he sees me. What's up, blood? He had this, like, soft blood. What's up, Black? She, what's happening, man? He got this little soft voice, you know what I mean? But don't let that little soft voice fool you. Easy Money is a, ooh, he was a cold piece. 
I remember, look, in, 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 in prison, right, Easy Money was real intelligent. So when he went to prison, and I'm going to get into that, but when he went to prison, Easy Money was in the room, right, and they sent this dude up in there. And Easy Money used to study a lot because he was in college. He was very intelligent. And this guy came in there and thought since Easy Money was a little dude, didn't know that he was a reputable paru, he, he thought that he could bully Easy Money out the bottom bunk. He told Easy Money, hey, man, that's my, you know, I got the bottom bunk. So Easy Money, you know, he looked at dude, he seen dude was bigger than him, but Easy Money was, he tactical. Easy Money didn't say nothing. He rolled his stuff up, put his stuff on the top bunk, you know what I mean, let dude get comfortable. Easy Money jumped on the top bunk, act like he was still reading his book. But Easy Money kept a razor in his mouth. People didn't know that unless you was cool with him. Easy kept a razor right here. You know what I mean? So when dude went and he, you know, he made his bed up and got his stuff situated, you know, he ain't had really nothing. Easy Money been there for a minute. He had a TV and everything. So Easy Money got everything. This cat ain't got nothing. He just, I guess, coming to the, you know, the joint. But when he laid back and decided to lay out, I guess he started looking at Easy Money TV. Easy Money jumped down like he was finna use the bathroom. And when he jumped down, dude was just like this here in the bed, kick back, not paying attention. Easy Money jumped down with that, with that razor and had that boy in there looking like a zebra. For real. He had that boy in there looking like a zebra. For real. For real. I mean, he put it on him. Easy Money wasn't no beast, and he was surgical with that thing, man. And he became known for that. But um, one of the main things that he was known for was that, you know, when Easy was in Elko, Easy was really with the business. You know, he was really with the function. And, and you know, Easy was in Elko when uh, that conference end situation happened. But anyway, when the conference end situation happened, you know, like I say, you know, if anyone know the B-Dogs out here in Vegas, they ride together. So when the Colts did that, you know, it wasn't like it was just, even though it was the, the Gerson against the Colts, all the other B-Dogs, they got active too, you know, because the Bloods always ride together. So he get out an uh, Elko and he get instantly involved in what was going on on the street, you know, and, um. What happened was Easy Money got caught up in the skating ring shooting. If anybody remember the skating ring getting shot up a long time ago, you know, when they uh, kicked in the side door of the skating ring, I mean, and they shot the skating ring up, that's what Easy Money went to prison for. You know, and uh, they, 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 uh, that was back in 87, 88, I think 88, but they kicked in the side of the uh, skating ring and they shot the skating ring up real bad. You know, and that was the first time something like that happened. So it was kind of like high profile. But Easy went went to the joint for that, and he ended up doing a lot of time for that. And he ended up developing a reputation in prison. You know, and it's been a lot of times where me and him have been back to back. You know, I mean, when I when I when I seen him, he came down from Ely, and he came to NNCC. You know, and this when you know we were really into it with the California Cats. Over that yard, you know, you know, the California cast actually tried to put up a fight at NNCC, you know, and that's when the, the Gershons and the Bloods formed an alliance up there and totally ran them off the yard. You know, Easy came down because he had to go to the dentist and he came down from Ely Max to NNCC yard. And when they let him on the yard, he fell right in, you know. Uh, you know, me and him became real cool, you know, right then and there. And we left that yard and ended up on Indian Springs Yard. And me, Easy Money, and Bankroll Bob became like three the hard way. You know, me, Easy Money, it was me, Easy Money, Lee Trick, and D-Head from PBs. We all was, we all was just et together every day, you know. And that was my partner, man, you know. And, you know, when it came to like, you know, uh, he was like a brother to me, man. And Easy Money, you know, you know, he he was Easy P family. You know what I mean? He represent that. You know, and he became, you know, I'm not gonna get in his business like that, you know what I'm saying? Because that that, that was like a brother to me, man. And whenever I got into something and it didn't it didn't even involve him, he didn't care. He was coming and he was gonna handle his business. And anybody that knew me and Easy on the springs knew how me and him ran together. You know what I mean? That was like a a big older brother to me, man, you know, and, you know, his, his, his beast was my beef. My beast was his beef. 
you know, and he was a paru, you know, but that was my brother, man, and, and I had a lot of love for that, 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 that brother, man, you know, and we started off on the wrong foot, you know, a long time ago, but as we got older, we, be, we you know, we became so close, man. That was like a, a, a brother to me, man. He was, man. And and I don't care what nobody say. That was my little brother, man. Well, you know, uh, I, I kind of lost contact with Easy. But I heard he got out, you know. And uh, I had a phone call, man, a while back, man. Somebody called me and said, yeah, uh, you heard about, uh, uh, what you call him? I said, who? They said, oh, uh, Easy Money. I said, what you mean? They say my little Brody, you know what I'm saying, got hit by a car while he was riding a bike, man, and he no longer with us. I'm like, what you mean? Like, yeah. And I'm bringing this story up to tell you, man, you know, that if you, if, if look, man, when you got genuine friends in your life, I'm talking about people that pray for you when you're not in the room. I'm talking about people that really look out for you. And it's crazy, though, because you can be from a certain area, but find out your best friend be from somewhere else that you're supposed to hate. It happened like that all the time. You realize that, you know, some of the cats that, that you used to be into it with turn out to be some of the most, you know, coolest dudes you ever meet. I got great relationships with, with, with Damus, man. And they like, a lot of them is like brothers to me, man. You know, Wayne Love, you know, B.I. from Paru, you know. There's a bunch of them cats, you know, Earn P, a bunch of them, man. I got a lot of love for them, man. They like brothers to me. We don't look at that color and where we from to divide us, you know. We look at the struggle and what we've been through, you know, things we got in common, man. And a lot of us, you know, we when we're around each other, we just get to be ourselves, you know. No mean mug and no extras. We just get to be ourselves. And some of us can crumb. Some of us just like to laugh. And some of us just like to kick it. And it feel good to be able to put your guard down around people that you once considered your enemy and be able to talk with them, man. And it was like that with me and k Dog from NTG. I mean, where I come from, you say his name over there, you know what I mean? That dude wasn't no joke. But me and him was in Tennessee fighting back-to-back -back against them cats out there. We had to put our backs, me, him, Lil' Craze from Six So we had to put our backs back to back and fight that darn it 30 people from Memphis, man. You know, we became cool, you know, because we, we was in, in, in somebody else's state that didn't like us, you know, and we had to, we was all we had. So we became like brothers, man, and we didn't lose that bond when we got out. We didn't let what they, they was going through on the streets, you know, get into you know, or have any type of impact on our relationship, we kept it cool. You see? And that's crazy because your own homies, the people you expect that from, you see, they hate on you for having and being cool with other people, but when you try to be cool with them, they end up stabbing you in the back. You see? Let me tell you something, when I when I called my case and dudes was shitting the door in my face where I come from and telling me that they moms told them that they didn't want them hanging out with me, I dig that. You know who took me in? I was over there hiding. The reason why the, uh, one time couldn't find me is because I was over there hiding out in Paru Turf. I was over there with Lil Devil, I was over there with Big Devil HP and Marquette. Rest in peace, peace stone. I was over there with them, laid out over there, getting water from Taro. Lay it out. And they ain't show me nothing but love. You see? But my own was telling me, man, my mom don't want me hanging around you or shutting the door in my face. And I'm not saying all, oh, but I shouldn't have to go up over there to get a break when I'm from over there. You see what I'm saying? But that's how it be, man. So, youngsters, if I hope you, I hope if you listen to this, it's going to be the same every time. This is the reason why I hope you're listening to me. This is the reason why you shouldn't be so quick to call someone your enemy and you shouldn't be so quick to call someone your friend. You see? You let them reveal who they are and you judge them according to who they are. Don't let nobody put something in your head and tell you that they up over there is your enemies and they up over there got to go and they up over there is this and they up over there. that. Don't do that, man. 
You let them up over there reveal who they are to you. And then you judge them solely on how they present themselves to you. Don't take what somebody else say. Don't take what these cats own or they beefs and ride with it. Because a lot of these dudes are, are, are had you in the sum over a female, man. A lot of these dudes are had you in something over pure jealousy. For real, your own so-called homeboys. And if you think I'm lying, all you got to do is start shining more than them. And then you go see the hisses. You go see the hatred. You go see the animosity. You go see the deceivery. All you got to do is start shining a little bit more than them. And you go see it. But the ones you call your enemy or the ones you say you don't F with over there and all them, them be the ones that you need to mess with. Them be the ones that you need to connect with. For real, get up out that box. Quit thinking just because you come from a certain area, that's all what it is. It's not like that, man. And that's what'll mess up your mentality. Because you're going to end up losing because them same people you put all your love and loyalty in is going to be the same dudes that cross you out and get you that up there in them, them penitentiary systems or go get you up over there where you don't want to be up under that grass. Them same people that you love and you show all this loyalty to, man. You need to break that chain of ignorance, man, and step up out of that box, man, and understand that it's a vast world up out there. It's many different type of people. They might not be from where you are, but they might think like you. You see? Learn to talk to people. Instead of coming up with these preconceived notions. Learn to deal with people. Learn to, to, to respect people. And you will see, man, that a lot of this stuff you've been told is a bunch of BS, man. A lot of these dudes don't like them dudes over there because they probably didn't got into one of them dudes and them dudes and got the best of them. And now they want to come and get everybody because they can't accept losing the fight. They got our head up over a female and, and he lost. Now he wants you and the whole crew to come up over here and get into it with them. And then somebody really get hurt and now it's an all out, you know what? Because he couldn't accept getting his behind whooped. Instead of telling that cat to let's run it back, he go get everybody else. Or the dude just straight up took his female and ain't nothing he can say that can get her back. So he gone loony. He don't care who he mess off in the process. So he come get all them and lie and say, y'all jumped him when you just took his girl. And now everybody in at each other's door. You see? And that's how it usually is. Until we somewhere... And we have to put our backs together because it's other people that don't like me and you. And it ain't because of the color we were, it's because of the color we are. Then you find out you got more in common than this dude. Then y'all have differences. You see? Now let me ask you a serious question. And let me see if Y'all mad enough to answer these questions. And I can't hear your answer. But let me ask you a question. How many of y'all then found out already that you experienced more love from what we call the other side than you do your own? How many of y'all real enough to admit that? That y'all didn't experience real love homie love, whatever you want to call it, or that y'all felt that the other side cared more for you than your own. How many of y'all experienced that? Keep it real. Yeah, yeah. I know. Am I lying though, homie? I know I'm not. See? See? And it is that way, and we walk around with that in the back of our head and we overlook that because we want to see, we don't want to seem like, you know, we fall, you know, we, we got love for the, we don't want to seem like that, but we know that it's, it's not real. And we walk around with this smirk on our face because we know it ain't real. You know, <laughs> you know, it ain't real. How many of you do? Let me explain something to you. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you how fake this is. It's been times where we've been in the Indo Mall 
and it was probably about eight, nine Thurston's, right? We in there, and we run into about seven, eight hoods. Mono, we mono, right? You know what happened? Nothing. People just looked at each other, threw up, you know, whatever, and they went on about their business, but did nothing happen. If we was really that mad at each other and hated each other like that, we wouldn't be able to see each other. But the fact that we was in there and we could have just told that up. Now, I ain't saying it ain't been situations to where I didn't been in the Indo Mall and I didn't ran across. Like, I ran across the ABMs. It was two of us and it was like six of them. And, you know, we seen each other and we threw it up. We did all that. The only difference is I got knocked into a box of uh, L.A. Gears and left with an L.A. Gill print on my face because Hot Top from ABM slapped me with a with a L. Man, look. And what happened to Hot Top from ABM? Y'all remember Hot Top? A lot of people don't know that Hot Top from ABMs, if you, people, a lot of people used to kill a John Lee, Boo Loco, and, 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 and Wrecking Ball. And people like that is Killer, John Lee, Wrecking Ball, No Shame, and Boo Loco. But one of the most treacherous ABMs in the beginning was Hot Top. And a lot of people don't know him. Hot Top, I think, went to the joint and then he paroled to Reno. I don't know if he ever came back, but Hot Top. He slapped me with a L.A. I had an L.A. gear print in my face for about three, four weeks. Man, he slapped me hard in the butt with an L.A. gear. So sometimes... When you see people, it go down. But most of the time, it don't. Y'all see each other in traffic. Sometimes you see each other and go, people don't be tripping, man. Like that. It be individuals with individual animosities that can't see each other. Because they both like the same girl. Or he took his girl in the past. You see what I'm saying? It be like that, man. That's what a lot of this bull crap be over in Vegas, man. Let's just keep it real. You know, a dude's over here fighting over crumbs. It ain't nothing major. Crumbs, man. You know, a cheap rims. You know, it don't really go down. It, it, it be everything but what it's supposed to be. You see? Really look at this, man. So for you youngsters out there, man, this is a serious game, man. And there's mothers out here, and y'all and y'all love y'all mothers. I know you do. So when I say mothers, don't walk away from the camera. Sit your behind down and finish listening to what I'm saying. Because you love your mama. If you didn't love your mama, why you always calling her when you go to jail, begging for $40? Why you always calling your mama? You call your mama and try to get her a three-way to call your girl. A bunch of y'all do. You can call moms, huh? And then when you ain't got nowhere to go, nine times out of ten, you always going to moms. So you love your moms. So if you love your moms, why you keep stressing her out? Why you keep stressing her out? Because cause, cause when God called her home, you think you lost now? You go really be lost. You should cherish every morning. You are blessed to hear your mother's voice if you still got her. You need to start your behavior. You need to start a showing the appreciation. Your mama took care of you for all these years, sometimes by herself. And she performed miracles. Remember them Christmases when you ain't had no father fit in the house, but you had mamas and she had to be your Santa Claus? See, we need to start remember them days. Remember them days before you get in the car with your homeboys. You remember, remember what that woman had to sacrifice to put clothes on your back before you go off and get with those other dudes that don't give a darn about you, man. You remember that woman that did the unthinkable for you. No one never in your life made you smile the way your mama made you smile, huh? Everything you had your first of, nine times out of ten, if you ain't had no father figure, came from your mama, man. And you remember when your mama gave you your first whatever and you smiled how happy you was? Yeah. Well, you remember that before you get in the car and you risk your life, you know, uh, with these youngsters out here doing this madness, man. Um, uh, imagine what you do in her heart. That same woman that you love to death. A lot of y'all love y'all. And they love you too because they post y'all on Facebook all the time. And y'all be on there trying to look so innocent. 
when you be with your mama, you be laying your head on your mama trying to look so innocent, like you just her little cub, like you just her little stinker, knowing darn well you didn't just, you know what I mean? But you need to start thinking about that. Start thinking about that. And if you got a father in your life, you really need to start thinking about that because, brother, you are blessed. Because there ain't too many fathers at home, man. And that's our problem. We need more fathers back in the house, man. The reason why our children, especially our sons, you know, they want to be like their mothers now. Because ain't no father in there to teach them how to be a man. To teach them that they produce testosterone. You see, that's what's wrong. And then we get mad at other people that point that out. The family structure is broken in the back community, man. And we can't be mad at other people for seeing that just because we don't. We know it is. We just don't want to deal with it and acknowledge it. And we don't want other people to acknowledge it. So if, if, if don't nobody acknowledge it, what is it going to do? Just fester? We never going to get up out this term or if we don't acknowledge the, the, the obvious, man. And that's the, the absence of the black man in the house, man. The first form of real discipline that your child go know, man. That's what balances everything out. It's hard for a woman to raise a man. So as much as y'all be out there with your tall can, with your homeboys, asking for new ports and stuff like that, you need to be spending that, spending that same time at home educating and teaching your sons, man, so they don't come up out here, man, and and, and, and lose, you know, you know, the, their existence to this bull crap, man. I know y'all sick of it. I know y'all sick of it. I know y'all sick of it. That's why every Sunday, the Lord's house be rocking because y'all 